In this fast-paced world full of convenience, have we become too dependent, too removed from our food and the simpler ways of life? In a time when we're all trying to live a little bit more sustainably, I am on a journey to do just that. In this episode, I'll be hunting for rabbit. I just want to state that I didn't just buy a gun and head out into the nearest field to start shooting. I actually approach this responsibly because any other way would mean arm response and time at His Majesty's uh, pleasure. That's prison. Um, so what I'd done was join a rifle club because you can't actually even start shooting at a rifle club or any shooting club until you pass your gun safety. I got insurance with the British Association of Shooting and Conservation, which is a fantastic hub for information. And throughout the seven, eight months that I was practicing, I, um, I networked like you wouldn't believe because it's important to get advice from experienced shooters and hunters. And here is one of them. Welcome to the Air Gun Show. Welcome to the Air Gun Show. Welcome to the Air Gun Show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Matt Manning, editor of the Air Gun World magazine and presenter of the Air Gun Show. Matt's cocked and ready to get your rat out so you don't have to. He does a lot of pest control is what I mean by that. Discharging his large weapon all over the country for a number of decades, Matt brings a wealth of knowledge in hunting, wildlife conservation and sustainable shooting practices. Right. He's here to share his three top tips for a successful rabbit hunt. It's a bit of a weird introduction, I'm sorry, and do you know what, I could change it, but I'm not gonna. Hi Amy, here are three of my top tips for rabbit shooting. The first one is to put in the work on the range before you head into the field. Now you're dealing with live quarry here, so you want to have absolute faith in your own ability and in your equipment before you even consider pulling the trigger. Tip number two is to make life easy for yourself. So forget about stalking those rabbits and set up an ambush. Instead, you want to sit down or even lay down within comfortable shooting distance of where you expect the rabbits to emerge. Now, this means that you'll be shooting from a really stable and familiar position and there won't be any of the noise or movement to alert those rabbits to your presence. My third and final tip is to make the absolute most of the meat. Even if you're shooting for pest control, you're going to be harvesting some delicious free range meat that's about the most ethical meat you could possibly source. It will have done virtually zero food miles. It's an animal that will have lived, fed and probably bred in the wild. It won't have been pumped full of antibiotics and it won't have been put in a trailer, driven to an abattoir and then queued up to be slaughtered. So do make the absolute most of that opportunity to enjoy this super ethical meat. Now, I'm sure you can do this. So get out there and make the most of it. In the week leading up to the shoot at Churchwood Fisheries, things got a bit weird. Each place I went to reminded me of what it was I was about to do. The burger at my favourite pub seemed to moo. The meat on the shelves in the Tesco's we stopped off at come to life. And the pets at home I went to get my dog food from had rabbit, pet rabbit. It was almost like it was a sign. I know it sounds stupid, but it was actually almost like a real heightened realisation that meat is animal. <laughs> Don't think my 2 2 pellet's going to be a match for that. So I've been shown round and what I'm doing now is scoping out the place. Um, and I've come in and I see some rabbit. I just want to watch in the spots that they graze in. So I'm feeling a bit apprehensive. Now I've, I'm getting like last minute jitters. Can I do this properly? Can I do this well? I, I know I can, I've, I've practiced, but there's always that doubt. What if you get a flyer, you know? You're not anticipating it, but you have to deal with it when it happens promptly and correctly. Can I pull the trigger as well? 
I'm also thinking it doesn't really need to die, does it? Can I justify my meat consumption? Now that I'm stood here in this field, knowing that potentially I may have the opportunity to kill a rabbit. I, I'm not in my comfort zone. I feel uncomfortable about it. Let's see if I can go through with it. One sleep and we'll see. The sun's coming up now. What I'm gonna do is do a couple of practice shots. Make sure I'm zeroed where I wanna be zeroed. I use this handy little jack pike steel paper target and pellet catcher. It's very portable and quite nifty. Great planking position. for me. I have done on the targets but in this situation this is not the time to be having a go. Like, so I'm gonna get some water I'll flip it now. This is tense. I do however eventually spot another and then I take my shot. My oh, heart's going through the fucking roof. Actually thinking, did it get away? I'm not entirely sure. I think I see it went down, but don't always get them. All right, I've been here an hour and they've not shown up, so I'm gonna actually army crawl through the field to get to a point where I think there's more rabbits, and then try my best again. Just got to wait. And wait. I did. And waited. And waited some more. I continued to wait. I thought I'd lick my finger and check the wind's direction. Because I've seen that on the TV. It was a hard one because it felt like I spent most of the time watching rabbits who knew I was already there. I don't know whether it was the amount of bug spray I had on because I was afraid to get ticks on me or the noise I was making. I couldn't be sure, but they were sure they wasn't sticking around. And then finally, I had one in my sight. It was at that point I nearly cried. Watership Downs came to mind, the disapproving rant my mum gave me. I didn't raise her to kill animals! While she was putting a leg of lamb in the oven, it hit me hard, like a ton of bricks. I had all these other thoughts about death. What does life even mean? What does it all mean? Everything we love will die. And then I said to myself, pull it together, Ames. It's dinner. And so I did. So after about two hours, I just shot my first rabbit. It went really well. Headshot from about 35. So crosshair is a little bit over. I did feel slightly emotional, which is odd because I happily devour a chicken shop meal without a thought of where the meat's come from. You know, how the chicken died. It's just so far removed. Uh, I think this is... Uh, 
quite a grounding experience. There's not one thing I won't use on that rabbit. Whoa. I don't quite know what to say at this point. I've done it. Um, I got emotional, I think, mainly because I was relieved I'd done it right. Because I just so wanted not to mess up. You know, injure the animal and then it hops off. Um, so it's been a success, really. Now's the difficult part. A bit I'm not looking forward to. I wasn't looking forward to any of it. It's a weird thing to say. Um, I've got to squeeze out the wee. And apparently... This part smells. God, here we go. Oh, it's still warm. That's weird. All right, this is a bit weird now for me. What did Matt say? I take the rabbit to the corner of the field to paunch. That is gut to you and I. And I now know why they call it gutting. Because those are the first things you see when you do that. I'm just going to keep this bit off camera because it is a bit gruesome. <coughs> <coughs> oh. God. I'm not breathing out my nose. You know what? Like Matt said, get some gloves. I said, no, I won't need them. Fucking wish I got him now. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Oh, fucking whoa. <coughs> There's its dick. I don't know how to get rid of its dick. Okay, this is part of it. Ugh. Bit of poo This is why we have butchers. I don't know what any of this is. Okay, I know that's guts. To be honest, it's all looking very healthy. Clean kidneys, looking great. I don't think I'll be able to do this bit as, as well as I am, actually. Um, it's, it's a really big part of hunting is to inspect the offal and this looks really really healthy no disease no like white bits it's how it ought to look oddly enough this is quite normal I don't know this is such a weird thing for me to say because I've never done this but once you take all the guts out you cut it open you do all the bits and pieces it's meat it's what I eat and a lot of people consume meat, but they don't think about where it's sourced. So now it's only right that we go to members of the public to see what they think. Clara everywhere. Do you eat meat? I love meat. Yeah. No, because I'm vegan and I've been for 13 years. Yes, I do eat meat. When I grew up, I started dealing with naturality and smoke herb. I just cut out the meat and deal with my fish and vegetable. Would you eat rabbit? Uh, no. Yes, I would eat rabbit. Yes. No, I wouldn't. My friend have a rabbit and say, um, and I give me one, and I say, man, I eat rabbit and I've got to kill him. I know I eat that, but bush food. You shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be shooting an animal in the face. Could you kill the meat that you eat, do you think? Yeah, most definitely. But it depends, because now we don't have to, do we? No. I love animals. I couldn't see myself killing it. I could, yes, yeah. If I had to. I can't kill, kill the animal. But if it's a deer in a field? No, I couldn't, no, because that just reminds me of Bambi and I can't do that. It is Bambi, isn't it? We, we used to use a 410 shotgun when we were kids because we were from the country and it was just normal. My dad taught us how to skin and gut the pheasants and how to pluck them and everything. So we learned all that. But a lot of people don't know how to do that. And they think it comes in a packet and it's not been alive. But I think I'd re-education people or send them to a slaughterhouse and they can see how their food's really killed. But a rabbit in the field? No. Lamb? No. Cow? No. I can still sit and eat meat. 
because it doesn't look like the animal, it just, yeah. Food is the staff of life, you know, as long as you bless it, them say. Don't you think there's a difference between fresh, organic, hunted meat than the chicken you get, let's say? I've never, I've never had none. You've never had any? I'm from the city. What about a deer? Where am I going to get that from? Well, I've got nicks. Never tried it, so I wouldn't know the difference. Oh, yes, there is a difference. You know, obviously, fresh food is far better. Yeah, anything that's freshly cooked, and you eat it sort of straight away. It's good for you. Yeah, better. You can get fake fillet steaks and that, but it tastes exactly the same. Well, you eat yeah, 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 yeah. Rabbit stew. Uh, yeah, if it's cooked up like that. If anything cooked rabbit up curry. like that. I would try it. Yes. After posting the rabbit I'd killed online, I received mixed reviews and a heap of disapproving comments. And then I got that one message that hunters had previously warned me about if I was to share my kill online. The one for the wish of my murder. It's clear that our relationship with food is far more complex than even I could have thought. We've experienced the process of hunting and heard from members of the public and have seen just how varied and passionate people's opinions can be. You only have to look at the disapproving comments that come from people who love a fry up to see just how disconnected we have become from the realities of where meat actually comes from. I hope this episode has sparked thoughtful reflection on the choices we make and the importance of being informed. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, dear Scopes.